Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. In 2015, we did some renovations to our sanctuary. We moved the organ console, we expanded the area up front, and changed the wall behind the altar, along with refreshing our carpet, pew cushions, and lighting. But there was one change we made that was really important to me. We made the floor inside our altar rail distinctive from every other flooring in the building. When you see it, you know this place is special apart from any other place. To this day, as I step on this distinctive floor every Sunday and feel the difference under my feet, I want to take off my shoes. I know I am on holy ground. This week we are looking at an overview of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament. We've already touched on Genesis and Exodus, and those are the two books with the most narrative in them, so we are somewhat familiar with them. But today we turn to something a bit different as we move to get the flavor of Leviticus. If you have watched every day, you may remember that I said something about these books containing the law, or what Jews call the Torah. The Torah is the law of God that was given to Moses on the mountain, and it spelled out the details of how they were supposed to live as God's people. There are actually two different kinds of law. Apodictic law is law that is true no matter what. The Ten Commandments are good examples. Don't steal, don't commit adultery, honoring the Sabbath, and so on. These commandments are true and there are no conditions attached. The other kind of law is casuistic law or situational law. These laws give guidance for what to do in certain situations. For example, if your ox falls in a ditch on the Sabbath, are you allowed to do the work of getting it out and how? That's different from you shall not steal. The Ten Commandments are found in Exodus, but as Leviticus begins, the focus turns to more of the casuistic or situational law. In fact, Leviticus gets more specific than that. In large part, Leviticus gives instruction for how the priests were to serve in the tabernacle. You may remember that after the Exodus, the people of God wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. You may never have thought about it, but since they were constantly moving around, they couldn't build a place for worship. Our church sanctuary means a lot to us, but they had to take theirs wherever they went. So they built a tabernacle. The word tabernacle means a place of dwelling, and by using that word they meant that this was a special place where God dwelt among them. They didn't mean God wasn't everywhere every elsewhere, everywhere at the same time, but just like we feel the special presence of God in our sanctuaries, this was where they found God's special presence. This tent of meeting, a literal tent, this place of dwelling was the place where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, and in fact it was considered the footstool in God's heavenly throne room. Also there was an altar for sacrifices to God. Much later on, under King Solomon, they finally built a temple in Jerusalem, and then that's where God was worshipped and sacrifices were made. The book of Leviticus is largely meant to tell the priests what to do as they offered sacrifices and other rites. Aaron, Moses' brother, was the first priest, and his descendants were called Levites, and so you can see the connection to the title Leviticus, Instructions to the Levites. The name of the book comes from the first words of the book, which say, The Lord said. In other words, this is how it should be done. Pastor Amanda and I have instructions like that for our worship, too. When we are between the altar and the people, when we speak for God to the people, we face the people. But when we speak from the people to God, we face the altar. Or maybe you've noticed the steps we take to uncover the communion and then to recover it at the end. We do things in a certain order and for certain reasons. In our hymnal, there are similar instructions for the people, too. 
since they were originally printed in red like they are even today they were called rubrics and that's where that word comes from Leviticus gives us a detailed look at early Israel at worship while many of us the details may not interest us now one thing we can draw from it is that our worship is orderly reverent and centered on God we are on holy ground thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God